Hey, what's up? It's LJ Tabano with Chicago's MMA.com, and we're here at Flow MMA. Rick Fay, noted longtime Jeet Kune Do and Filipino martial arts instructor in town doing a seminar. Everyone that trains knows you, you've been doing the seminar circuit for a long time. Um, if someone goes for someone doesn't, who doesn't know and not familiar with it, what can they expect to, to get out of coming to one of your seminars? Well, we, we always do a mix of things. Mixed martial arts has, has been around, you know, I, I always tell people we've been mixing martial arts since the early 70s, so um, they'll get a, a mix of weaponry, uh, both empty hand versus weapon, weapon versus weapon, that kind of thing. We apply the weapon concepts to different categories of empty hand, whether it's striking, whether it's trapping. Uh, there's a lot of groundwork, and we try to present different looks at that. So some of the groundwork is submission design, submission based. Some of the groundwork is more for combat use, breaking, things like that. And I, I try to be as true as I can to the arts that my instructors have given me. So we teach the John Fon martial arts, which is obviously Bruce Lee's lineage, and we try to, to make sure that they can get an experience of that art that's, that's representative of what was going on at that time. Um, Kali is my first love, so the Filipino martial arts are incredibly uh, varied and complicated, and there's just a lot to offer there. So generally we'll spend a lot of time there, and I think students learn a lot. Whether or not they're ever going to use a weapon, it's important that they, that they learn and, and do those things. Um, the current trend, of course, in MMA is, is the grappling and that kind of thing, so everybody's on the floor, which you know, always used to be that. Um, so we're inevitably going to be on the floor doing some things. So, um, I guess the messages that I try to get across are enjoy your training, be safe, try to make better people. You know, just make better people. I, I don't want to create overly aggressive or overly um, out of line people. You know, we want to be good representative for the art to the public as well as uh, competent fighters. How has the, it changed in terms of the people starting to train now as opposed to years ago? How have the practitioners changed because of how uh, mixed martial arts has gained popularity? Mm -hmm. Um, well, first of all, they're more knowledgeable coming in. Just generally, they know the terminology, jabs, crosses, hooks, triangles. You know, years ago, nobody knew what a triangle, arm lock, all, all that stuff. They didn't know. And so the education process is shorter now. Um, I do think there's some myths that they come in with, you know, and we try to reassure them. You know, look, you're not going to get beat up right away. What you saw on TV last night is not going to happen to you today. You know, you're okay. Um, we have drills and, and methods where the average person can come in and really get a feel for it, get an experience, but not get hurt. And um, again, we, lessons that we draw from weaponry are those. You know, you, when you train weaponry, safety is first. Otherwise, you and I won't make the training. We won't survive it. And so that goes over into our empty hand. And, um, I think that people coming into martial art now are also more willing to maybe not willing to, they're more prepared for the physical work. You know, years ago they thought it was going to be a bunch of tricks and wear kung fu uniform and throw stars or something, you know. They didn't really understand that there was going to be a lot of sweating involved. I think now when the students come in, they're ready to work out. You mentioned Greg Nelson. There, it seems like it's a natural, natural progression for people who have done Jeet Kune Do to work into mixed martial arts and enjoy mm -hmm. success. Yeah. I think, you know, a lot of the, those guys, you know, I, I sometimes feel like a proud father and because I was lucky enough to work with them very early in their career and then kind of watch them go and do the things they've done. And Greg is, is phenomenal, you know. Um, Eric Paulson is great. David Leach went into the stunt business. He's, he's great. You know, some of these guys that came through the group and, and uh, I can't describe it any better than just being a proud papa, mm -hmm. you know, to watch these guys. And I, I could see it back then but I was busy trying to compete with them. You know, I was sort of busy trying to see if I could keep up with them, uh, which basically was never true, but I, just, I tried. You know, <laughs> they kept me on my toes. Uh, and uh, I remember years ago, I promised myself that I would never let Greg see me tired. <laughs> and uh, Greg, if you're listening to this, I would walk up the stairs to our old gym, and my legs would already be burning when I walk up the stairs, you know. And I'd look down the hall, and he'd already be there. He was always there before I was. And I'd just go, Shit, he's here again. <laughs> but uh, no, he was very good for me. And all of, all the people that have come through, uh, you know, I've just been so lucky to uh, 
kind of train with them as far as I could and then just watch them watch go. Them go. You know? and talk about the guys that you've worked with when they're young, but even your instructor, Danny Nassano, when did he take up uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu? He was in his 60s already, 59, right? Yeah. So it's, 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 even the people that you've learned from yeah. have been affected by the sport. You know, I, I think when you bring up Mr. Nassano, there's nobody in our lifetime that's as influential that's, you know, I always say he's the greatest martial artist of our lifetime. And no one who has seen him and talked to him argues with you. If they haven't seen him, then they might argue with you. Uh, it's not taking away anything from other people's accomplishments, but there's nobody who has been, first of all, on the forefront of every martial art trend. Uh, secondly, just as a human being, you know, he, he's uh, an unbelievably good example for people to follow. And he has a unique set of qualities, intellectual qualities, physical qualities, uh, sort of moral and spiritual qualities that make him who, who he is. And uh, we have been so lucky to have him kind of leading the way. Um, when he steps aside, I think there will be a lot of us kind of lost for what to do next. It'll take us a while to settle down <laughs> and figure out, okay, how do we operate without this great mentor? Yeah. And, um, but no, he, he's been, I think everything that's happened has kind of been with his uh, guidance. You know, he set it up very early. He, said, he told us all, he says, you have to do this art your way and you have to find your own path. And he was one of the very few instructors out there who was encouraging everyone to train with other people. You know, he would tell me, you know, try this, try this, go do this guy, go do this guy. He's still doing it. You know, he, we, we're trying to learn the Balintawak system of stick fighting. And uh, he keeps saying, you have to have this guy in, you have to have this guy in, go check out this guy. And he's just so... Uh, inquisitive I guess is the word like I'll, I'll give you an example he's always the first one with the new iPhone he's always the first one with the new attachments for oh, it, I didn't whatever know that. it is oh <laughs> he's fascinated with with progress yeah new technology new this new that he knows the trends and everything and he's he's just amazing uh, athletic shoes he knows what's coming out every year. You know, uh, Kobe Bryant. He got a specialized pair of athletic shoes from Kobe Bryant nice. to do. You know, so he's he's just uh, a real good example for us of forward thinking. For you know, it's what Bruce Lee intended. Mm -hmm. Bruce Lee said he set that art up for continual growth. And uh, I know we had a movement that wanted to do Bruce Lee's art in Bruce Lee's way, which is valid. That's okay to do. Um, and there was good, good material there. But the rest of the art was set up so that we continue to grow and continue to do new things. And uh, MMA is going to guarantee that because uh, when the guys are fighting, they have to come up with new things. So what about your growth? What's on the road ahead for you and, and what are you working on? What can we expect from you in the future? You know, for me personally, uh, it's a lot of maintenance. Um, you know, I find as I get older, my body takes a lot, of, lot more maintenance, um, and I enjoy that. I like, I like my training. You know, I enjoy that. Um, I would like to get martial art more accessible to the average person. That's, that's my goal. I've always seen myself as kind of in the JKD spectrum of people mm -hmm. amongst my peers. I'm the high school teacher. <laughs> so that's, that's how I view myself. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm great at getting you the basics, teaching you the parameters of the art. You know, this is what is all involved. Getting you all fired up and then you now go to college. Oh, you go, yeah. Yeah, you know. And some of the other people can be the, the college professors and the research scientists and whoever. I'm quite happy being in this high school teacher role. Um, and s given that, I want to make the art accessible to more and more different types of people. You know, every time we apply it to a new group, uh, you know, we're training a group of NHL hockey players, um, training football players, training women's self-defense, we train a lot of soldiers, you know, that kind of thing. And there's, there's just so many applications, so many different things that you can do. You know, the MMA uh, group has one set of requirements. And you know, inside the cage, that's a game that they have to learn how to play. And I think we have some things to offer them. Outside of that, we also have th things to offer everybody. Yeah. You know, that's the, that's the fun part. So you're so busy on the seminar circuit and at your own school. Uh, someone in the Chicago area wants some information or training advice. Mm -hmm. What should they do from you? Um, well, they can email me at mnkali.com, mnkali.com, and I answer all the emails. So that's, I, I like the training questions, especially if they've been to a seminar or something, they say, what about this angle? You know, that, I, I think like that all day, so I don't know anything else to do. Um, they're always welcome in Minneapolis, so anybody wants to come up. And uh, seminar-wise, I love to come out. So it's, it's uh, something I like to do. So. mnkali.com. There you heard it. The guy has ridiculous amount of information, 
good guy to learn from, Rick Fay, LJ Tapano, Chicago's MMA. Thanks a lot. Rick. Thank you very much. Thank you.